What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Life of Mike. We are in my garage right now. Here in my garage. As you can see, uh, I got lots of furniture in here, a barbecue. We just uh, got over Hurricane Nicole, so it's been a little bit crazy. So you can see Christmas came early. I've got all my packages. And uh, a couple things I think I'd like to do tonight just to kind of prep for tomorrow. Um, I received the new ignition switch, uh, or sorry, not the ignition switch, the new uh, kill switch here. So I will be installing the kill switch. And what else did we get? I also got some spools. Right now you can see I'm holding up the bike with just a couple of socket head cap screws. And uh, I'd like to remove those and install the spools. So. Let's prep for tomorrow's testing by installing that new kill switch and the spools. Okay, so we've got the new spools installed, and I went with what is sort of a nylon uh, spool rather than the anodized ones you see a lot on Amazon. Uh, the nylon typically shows wear a lot less. Um, if you get those anodized ones, um, a lot of times you'll be able to see every single little scuff every time you use this thing, and it just looks uh, kind of, you know, ugly after a while. So you can see I've got them on both sides. I had to adjust my, uh, my stand a little bit but this is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, so now we're gonna move up to the uh, kill switch here. We'll get this swapped out and uh, that should do it for tonight. So unfortunately, it looks like the seller sent me the wrong kill switch. Uh, this looks like it came off of an R6S, not an R6. And that kind of had me worried for a second on the ECU. Uh, but thankfully I did check the ECU and this is from uh, 2010, 2011. Um, and it should work for 2012 as well. So looks a little dusty, but overall appears to be in good shape. Um, I did get a good deal on these parts, so uh, it was worth the risk on my part. But um, as far as the kill switch goes, it looks like we're gonna be out of luck there. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll take this one off, see if I can clean the contacts a little bit and see if that helps with the, uh, with the starting. So let's go ahead and get this thing off and open it up. So I can't believe this. So I, I saw a few videos on YouTube of people having uh, starter button issues and kill switch issues, um, and people reporting that spiders were making little nests inside of this particular kill switch. I was like, eh, there's no way that's, you know, what's going on with mine. And uh, yeah, does that look like a spider web to you? Looks like a spider web to me or some sort of a nest. So uh, I've got a feeling this might be why we're having some contact issues, but Gonna go ahead and extract this and hopefully that fixes the problem. All right, I got the cobwebs all cleaned out. Now the nest didn't actually go all the way down to the contact for this. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this switch. If I need to open it up again, I can. Um, it's not a very complicated switch. Um, and I believe it just connects right over here. So um, that's a very small isolated issue that um, if it continues to present itself, we'll address it. But uh, I think we can move on for now. Um, I did get one other item that we could probably install tonight, and that is the O2 sensor. So um, I don't have the proper wrench size in order to tighten that down. So I'll just tighten it by hand for now, and then I might have to go uh, get a tool tomorrow to be able to tighten it all the way. Uh, but at least we can get it kind of fed uh, to the right area. And uh, I think that will be the final step for tonight. Okay, so I've got the O2 sensor in place. It's just been hand tightened, so I'll need to get a wrench that's large enough to really torque that thing down. 
Um, I fed it up through here and it is now plugged in. So this thing is all ready for testing tomorrow. I still have the battery unhooked. I'm gonna hook it back up to the trickle charger for now, uh, but we are ready to test this thing out tomorrow. All right, guys, it is the next morning, so I am ready to hopefully get this thing running today. So the first thing I'd like to do before we run all the tests is I'm gonna drain the existing gas in the gas tank. Um, I was able to purchase a siphon from Advanced Auto Parts and we'll, we will be using this to, uh, to drain the gas. So that's step one, because I keep having to lift the tank and it's kind of heavy because it's full of gas and we are not gonna be running that gas through the rest of the bike, especially with the, uh, the new throttle body and secondary injectors that we've purchased. So let's go ahead and get the gas tank drained and continue on with the testing. All right, I just finished draining the gas tank and that pump worked pretty well for just a $9 pump from uh, Advanced Auto Parts. So uh, now we're ready to continue on and start setting up for the tests. So the way I'm planning to do this, and I'll put this up on the screen, the first test is going to be the new ECU with the existing throttle body. And I need to set the TPS sensor back to its original uh, position, lining up the paint marks. The next test is going to be the old ECU with the new throttle body, assuming the first test fails. And then the final test will be the new ECU with the new throttle body. So let's go ahead and get started with the first test. Okay, so you can see the throttle position sensor. I have realigned the paint marks on the top and the bottom. So this should now be set back to how it was from the factory. It's nice and tight. So I'm gonna drop this back in, get it plugged in, plug in the new ECU, hook up the battery, and then we'll see if we still get a code 60 when we turn the key on. All right, so you can see we've got our new ECU hooked up. We got the battery connected, got our throttle body connected. If you listen closely, you can hear this high pitched whine coming from the motor, which would indicate that the motor should be good and the check engine light is now gone. So I'm still going to run through the diagnostic tests to make sure everything is working properly, but this is a good sign um, and it kind of solidifies the theory that something went wrong with the ECU tune. So uh, this ECU came off of a pretty much a brand new 2010. Uh, so really happy that worked out, but let's go ahead and run through the diagnostic modes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, acceptable values on screen again, just similar to how I did on the last video. But let's go ahead and enter diagnostic mode by holding down both the select and reset buttons at the same time. We'll turn the key should get the HI, the high over there, then it will switch to Diag, which it did, release the buttons, press both, hold again. All right, we are now in diagnostic mode one. All right, I've got my little cheat sheet here. So as I turn the throttle, it should start from 12, 12 to 21. We're currently reading 16. And as I turn, you can see the valves move and my max value I'm showing is 99, and it should be between 97 and 106, so that is acceptable. It's kind of bouncing between 99 and 100. All right, now go to diagnostic mode 13 by pressing select. All right, we are showing 17, acceptable is between nine and 23. As I twist, wide open throttle, should be between 94 and 106. We are showing 100, so that is a pass as well. Roll back. We'll go to diagnostic mode 14. Currently showing 17. Should be between 12 and 22, that's a pass. And we're going to roll on. Should be between 97 and 107. Currently showing 101, that is a pass. Roll back. All right. 
And now 15, we should be between 10 and 24. We're showing 18, so that is a pass. And roll on the throttle, should be between 95 and 109. We're showing 101, so that is also a pass. So all four tests pass. The motor appears to be good, and the issue was with the ECU. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing buttoned back up and see if we can run it. All right, we have reached a good checkpoint. So I got the lower part of the air box reinstalled. I've got the air filter uh, reinstalled. I might change this at some point. It looked a little bit dirty, but I kind of blew it out with the air compressor. Um, so it should be good for now, at least for the continued testing we need to do. Now, you might recall on the last video that the secondary injector system here was really filthy. You can see the, uh, the corrosion, the rust on these injectors. One of these looks salvageable, uh, but I did order a new secondary injector set. So this may have been part of the reason the previous owner had some top end uh, fueling issues. So wanted to get that replaced anyways. And it looks like I'm dripping a little bit of gas on me, but that's kind of been the theme of the day so far. Um, so let's go ahead and get the secondary injectors hooked up and uh, installed on the bike. Okay, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the old versus the new. I think we're gonna have a much improved fuel delivery system here. Okay, so I was able to get the tank all sealed up. Everything is put back in place. We got the air box installed. We got the secondary uh, fuel injectors installed. I also found some spare hardware here to uh, fasten down the tank. So you can see the tank is fully secured now on all sides. I just need to put the cover panels back on. Uh, but before we proceed any further, I think we should put some gas in this thing and uh, see if it will start idle and uh, if I can get a few revs out of it. So let's see how it goes. So I almost forgot, before we actually start this thing up, I need to tighten down the O2 sensor. We had just hand tightened that last night. Uh, so I was able to actually get an O2 sensor wrench. It's got a little slot in there. Um, not sure if I'm in the camera. It's got a little slot in there that will help, uh, you know, basically get it past the cable so you can tighten it down. So, oh, it's a 3 8 inch drive. That's the 3 8 So 3 8 inch drive, 22 millimeter uh, socket. Let's get this thing tightened up. Okay, so theoretically this thing should be ready to start. I got the battery hooked up, ECM is hooked up, fuses are good, got a full tank of gas, no check engine light. Um, and as far as the starter or the kill switch uh, button goes, um, I, I remember when I first bought this, hearing a little bit of clicking at the starter relay. So if there's any delay on the starting, um, I have a feeling the relay might be bad. So that might be the next thing I need to fix before this is you know, really road worthy. Um, but as long as this runs and I can rev it, then the next thing we're going to move on to is the exhaust. But uh, this is the first start since fixing things, so let's see if it works. All right, no check engine lights. Prime.
guys. So there you have it. The R6 is running again. We actually have no issues with the uh, kill switch or starter switch anymore. Um, everything seems to be working great. Obviously, it's running like crap without a muffler. So I'm going to get the uh, probably the M4 uh, Carbon Street Slayer muffler on order. And uh, this thing is going to be ready for the road. I've got an appointment with the DMV next week to get it registered. Um, so I'm going to work on getting this thing buttoned up now. But um, I think this is a good stopping point for episode two. Episode three, we should be doing the final cosmetic touches. And I uh, can't wait to see how this thing turns out. So thanks for checking out the channel. Stay tuned for future episodes when we get this R6 back on the road.